Jim Ratcliffe is set to complete a 25% takeover of Manchester United. It's going to be ratified by the board next week. The Glazers are going to stay in control. What guarantees can we have about a Jim Ratcliffe takeover towards a full takeover? What I'm going to do in this video is run through what I consider eight of the most important questions that we as fans need answers for. We've wanted a different ownership structure. We're getting one. I wouldn't say it's the one that we wanted, where the Glazers remain in control. So what exactly can Jim Ratcliffe do owning 25% of Manchester United? What I'm going to do is run through, as I said, what I consider eight of the most important questions. It's not an exhaustive list, and I want you in the comments, right? Anything that you don't feel that I, I cover in this, please let me know in the comments below, because we're going to have to do a lot more research into this, into thinking exactly what we need to know because there there are so many questions ladies and gents i'd say so anyway and the first question i'd say is the most obvious and most important question what guarantees are we gonna have that this is the beginning of a staged full takeover that's going to be the premise behind this 25 percent foot in the door from jim ratcliffe and ineos the concept that they will own all of manchester united but when what point in the future we heard it before, I think it was called put and call offers where uh, they would buy X amount of shares at X point and then X amount of share, uh, shares at another point. What are these dates? And as I said, what guarantees do we have that the Glazers will sell? What if after a few years, the value of Manchester United goes up significantly and they go, ah, actually, never mind. We actually don't want to sell you anymore. What guarantees can we have? Obviously, it's a little bit different. We're used to the Glazers lying through their back teeth. Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos would have legal uh, documents guaranteeing it but that's what we need to know what what is the guarantee process towards that full takeover and this is a big one for me like what guarantee can Ratcliffe have if the Glazers still have more than 51 percent control I'll speak about the actual concept of Ratcliffe asking for sporting control etc and that's going to be covered in these eight questions but what guarantee again what guarantees we as United fans we We've experienced the Glazers for 18 years. We know how much they lie. We know how much they say one thing and then do another thing. Or not do another thing. It will be different because it will be legally binding. But we as fans need to know what these guarantees are in terms of influence at the club. And this is a huge one as well, right? Uh, for a lot of people, this is why the Qatari bid was the most important one. Because it would wipe out the debt. Now, I need to know, you need to know, what is going to be happening to the debt. The 25% per purchase of Manchester United doesn't do anything to the debt. That just buys 25% of the club. So what about the billion that's outstanding in direct debt? Money owed on transfers is a big one, by the way, because that directly affects our ability every single window and our FFP. Who's going to pay off that debt? Is it going to be towards what the initial INEOS structure was, where they were, I think, going to, get, going to get loans from Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, then pay off that debt of Manchester United in one lump sum, and then INEOS as a company would absorb that debt into their books? Would that still happen? We need clarification on the actual structure of what is going to happen to the debt of Manchester United, right? And this one here. We're seeing and reading that Jim Ratcliffe as part of his 25% offer, wants sporting control of Manchester United. Again, what does that guarantee in terms of decision-making ability? Does that mean that the Glazers would be completely and utterly hands-off and have zero influence and zero decisions to anything to do with the football side of Manchester United? Is that correct? Is that part of the Ineos offer? We need to have, we need to know all this stuff. As fans, we need to get clarity on this. That's what I mean. There's so many questions as it stands that we just don't have answers for, right? And there we go. What is this proposed sporting control structure? Immediately, you're seeing names like Paul Mitchell being linked with Manchester United, who, of course, you know full well how much of a fan I am of Paul Mitchell and how I do think that would be a very good appointment at, at board level for Manchester. Well, not board level, but a, a, a sporting control and sporting structure level. But what are the plans? What are the manifestos? What are the uh, the aims and the targets? We're going to have to have all of this laid out and explained to us because that creates accountability. And that is one thing that Ineos, with this 25% structure, they all need accountability. 
we need to be able to hold them to something. So what is this proposed sporting control structure? Where does Jim Ratcliffe lie in that? Where I mean, I imagine Dave Brailsford would probably come in and I've got my serious concerns about what he's done uh, in terms of a positive impact at Nice. Uh, if you look at Ineos, uh, is it Ineos Grenadiers as well? The old team Sky, what's happened there? Cycling, they were dominant at one point, once upon a time. That's not the case anymore. Uh, is he fit for purpose, really? Or is he just somebody who you've worked with before? Questions, questions, questions. What is that proposed sporting structure? Number six, what investment will you be bringing to Manchester United? Now, this, of course, is a huge one. The Qatari bid proposed somewhere in, I think the, the, the numbers went up yesterday, I swear. It was somewhere between one and two billion dollars worth of investment. Now that investment would go into a new training ground, that would go into a new stadium, that would go into obviously team investment in terms of players, also community investment in terms of the surrounding areas in Manchester. What investment will be guaranteed and what investment will be brought by Ineos? We need to know that because... Jim Ratcliffe buying 25% of the football club brings zero investment, zero pounds. All that's doing is buying him 25% of the club, which means that Manchester United on top of that will still need investment. And that's going to come from one of two ways now. That would either come from Ineos or more of Manchester United would need to be sold off for that investment. So the likes of Elliot Management, is it Ares, Ares Management? There was, I think, two or three. Carlisle, I think, was another one. All these minority investment um, offers. I mean, that would mean the Glazers diluting their ownership even more. So what are Ineos going to bring? Are they going to bring, as part of this proposed takeover, 25%? Does that mean that they are going to front the money for the investment that is required? We need to know that. That's that's a huge one, a major one for a lot of people, and correctly so, because without this investment, Manchester United cannot modernise. We we were, once upon a time, Carrington was the most modern training ground in England. That was back in what? 2000s? 20 years ago. Old Trafford, once upon a time, the greatest club stadium in England. Not anymore. Not in terms of infrastructure not in terms of modernization all of this needs to be done and it can't be done without investment and if it's not a full takeover there's now questions galore about what that investment is and where it comes from and who it comes from as well number seven look i've done videos i've done research and i've spoken to quite a few people about the uh, ineos ownership of nice now they've made some mistakes absolutely made quite a few mistakes what i would say now is Nice is in the strongest position it has been under the Ineos ownership. They've actually got a good sporting director in, got it in last season, and they've now, I think they're now, what, second in the league. From a sporting perspective, in terms of uh, structure behind the scenes, Nice is as strong as it's been, but they made some serious mistakes. I would say Dave Brailsford is involved in those. What mistakes have been made at Nice? What have Ineos learned that they cannot repeat at Manchester United? Because <laughs> Nice and United, that's not even trying compared to the size of those two clubs. All right. That needs to be defined. This is why the manifesto and the plan is required from Ineos. So far, we've heard nothing in from that sense. But all of this needs to be told to fans. And number eight, and this is something that somebody said on, a li on the live show. And I thought was kind of a fair and prevalent question, really. What guarantees do we have here that Ineos and Ratcliffe come in, don't look, that they don't come in, buy 25%, invest a bit in the club, and then a few years down the line, the Glazers go, actually, no, you know what? Now we decided we don't want to sell you the rest of it. In fact, we actually want to buy your 25% back. What guarantees do we have that they cannot do that? That would need to be, obviously, written into this takeover offer, this 25% takeover offer. But the main question that we all need answers for, what? Is this full takeover? When is this full takeover going to happen? When are the Glazers not going to be in control of Manchester United? That is the defining question. Is it a step in the right direction? I mean, technically, yes. But the Glazers are still in control. 
So I do not trust them to do anything. So let me know. Are there any other questions that I haven't covered? You can let me know in the comments below, as you always do. But just let me know.